I've for for uh, five six years at MIT really focused on this human side of driving question, and one of the big concerns is the uh, micro sleeps, drowsiness, these kinds of ideas. And one of the open questions was: Is it possible through computer vision to detect or any kind of sensors? The nice thing about computer vision is you don't have to have direct contact to the person. Is it possible to detect increases in uh, drowsiness? Is it possible to detect these kind of micro sleeps or actually just sleep in general? Yeah. Um, among other things like distraction, th these are all words that have so many meanings and so many debates like, mm -hmm. like attention is a, is a whole nother one. Just because you're looking at something doesn't mean you're loading in the information. Just because you're looking away doesn't mean your peripheral vision can't pick up the important information. There's so many complicated vision science things there. Um, so I, I wonder if you could say something to, uh, you know, they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. Do you think um, the eyes can reveal something about uh, sleepiness uh, through uh, through computer vision, through, through just looking at the video of the face? And Andrew Huberman and I, your friend, oh, have talked about this. So I would love man. to work brilliant on this uh, together. It's a, you should do it. It's a fascinating problem. But drowsiness is a tricky one. So there's what kind of information? There's uh, blinking and there's eye movement. And those are the ones that can be picked uh, up with computer vision. Do you think those are signals that could be used to say something about where we are in this continuum? Yeah, I do. And I think there are a number of other features too. I think, um, you know, aperture of eye. So in other words, partial closures, full closures, um, duration of those closures, duration of those partial closures of the eyelid. Um, I think there may be some information in the pupil as well, because as we're transitioning between those states, change, there are changes in what's called the automatic nervous system, or technically it's called the autonomic nervous system, part of which will control your pupillary size. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that there is probably a wealth of information. When you combine that probably with aspects of steering angle, steering maneuver, mm -hmm. and if you can sense the pressure on the pedals as well, mm -hmm. my guess is that there is some combinatorial feature that creates a phenotype <laughs> of you are starting to fall asleep. And as the autonomous controls develop, the, it's time for them to kick in. Some manufacturers, auto manufacturers sort of have something beta version or maybe an alpha version of, of this already starting to come online where they have a little camera in the wheel that I think tries to look at some features. Almost everybody doing this and it's very alpha. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, the thing that you currently have, some people have that in their car, there's a coffee cup or something that comes up that you might be sleepy. The, the primary signal that they're comfortable using is uh, steering wheel reversals. So, so basically using your interaction with the steering wheel and how much you're interacting with it as a sign of sleepiness. So if you have to constantly correct the car, yeah. that, that's a sign of like you starting to drift into micro sleep. I think that's a very, very crude signal. It's probably a powerful one. There's a whole nother component to this, which is it seems like it's so driver and subject dependent uh, the the how our behavior changes as we get sleepy and drowsy seems to be right. different in complicated, fascinating ways where you can't just use one signal. It's kind of like what you're saying. There has to be a lot of different signals that you should then be able to combine. The hope is there's uh, the search is for like universal signals that are pretty damn good for like 90% of people. Yeah. But I don't think we need to take necessarily quite that approach. I think what we could do in some clever fashion is using the individual. So what you and I are perhaps suggesting here is that there is a, an array of features that we know provide information that is sensitive to whether or not you're falling asleep at the wheel. Some of those, let's say that there are 10 of them, you know, for me, seven of them are the cardinal features. Mm -hmm. For you, however, you know, six of them, and they're not all the same sort of overlapping, are those for you. 
I think what we need is algorithms that can firstly understand when you are well slept. So let's say that people have sleep trackers at night and then your car integrates that information. That would be amazing. Understands when you are well slept. Yeah. And then you've got the data of the individual behavior unique to that individual snowflake like <laughs> mm -hmm. when they are well slept. This is the signature of well rested driving. Then you can look at deviations from that and pattern match it with the sleep history of that individual. And then I don't need to find the sort of, you know, the one size fits all approach for 99% of the people. I can create a very bespoke tailor like set of features, the Savile Row suit of sleepiness features. You know, that would be my, if you want to ask me about moonshots and crazy ideas, that's where I go. But to start with, I think your approach is, is a great one. Let's find something that covers 99% of the people. Because the worrying thing about microsleeps, of course, unlike, you know, drugs or alcohol, which, you know, certainly is a terrible thing to be behind the wheel. With those, often you, you react too late. And that's the reason you get into an accident. When you fall asleep behind the wheel, you don't react at all. The, you know, at that point, there is a two-ton missile driving down the street and no one's in control. Yeah. That's why those accidents can often be more dangerous. Yeah, and uh, the fascinating thing is, in the case of semi-autonomous vehicles, like Tesla Autopilot, this is where I've had disagreements with Mr. Elon Musk, <laughs> is, uh, and, and uh, the human factors community, which is this community that one of the big things they study is uh, human supervision over automation. So you have like pilots, you know, supervising an airplane that's mostly flying autonomously. The question is, when we're actually doing the driving, how do micro sleeps or general, how does dr drowsiness progress and how does it affect our driving? That question becomes more fascinating, more complicated when your task is not driving, but supervising the driving. So your task mm -hmm. is to take over when stuff goes wrong. And that is is complicated, but the basic conclusions from many decades is that humans are really crappy at supervising mm -hmm. because they get they get drowsy and uh, lose vigilance much, much faster. The really surprising thing with Tesla Autopilot, it was surprising to me, surprising to uh, the human factors community, and in fact, they still argue with me about it, is uh, it seems that humans, in Tesla's with, with autopilot and other similar systems are not becoming less vigilant, at least the, with, the, with the studies we've done. So there's something about the urgency of driving. I, I can't, I'm not sure the why, but there's something about the risk, I think, the fact that you might die uh, is still keeping people awake. The question is, as Tesla autopilot or similar systems get better and better and better, how does that affect increasing drowsiness? And that's when you need to have, that's where the big disagreement was, you need to have driver sensing, meaning driver facing camera uh, that tracks some kind of information about the face that can tell you uh, drowsiness. So you can tell the car if you're drowsy so that the car can be like, you should be probably driving or pull to the side. Right. Or I need to do some of the heavy lifting here. Yeah. Um, so there needs to be that dance of inter interaction exactly. of, yeah. of, of a human and machine. But currently it's mostly uh, steering wheel based. So, yeah. you know, this this idea that your hands should be on the, on the steering wheel, that's a, uh, a sign that you're paying attention is, um, is an outdated and a very crude metric. I agree. Yeah. I think there are far more sophisticated ways that we can solve that problem um, if we invest.